Hello and welcome to the city of London, a city within a city. People think about London as the great metropolis that we all know, but within it is something called the city of London. It goes back many, many hundreds of years and it's the epicenter of the global financial system, if the truth be told. It's more than that, however. It is the center of a global web of secret societies that control the planet today. And they come uh, from a series of interbreeding bloodlines which you can trace back to the ancient Middle and Near East thousands and thousands of years ago. And the staggering truth is that these interbreeding bloodlines under different names have increasingly controlled planet Earth from that time to this, never more so than today. In the next few hours on this video, you're going to be introduced, if you've not already read the book, uh, my book, The Biggest Secret, to some staggering, stunning, and I'm the first to say, bizarre information. The basis of the video is an interview with a lady called Arizona Wilder, who was brought up and mind controlled from uh, almost the time that she was born uh, to eventually, as she did, conduct satanic rituals at the highest level of the satanic ritual network, involving some of the most famous people on the planet. But we'll get into that as we go along. It is bizarre, and that's not even the most bizarre uh, uh, aspect of this story, which I'll come to as we progress. But the bizarre just happens to be true. And this video is designed to be a companion to my book, The Biggest Secret, and you'd get more out of the interview with Arizona if you've read that book. But what I'm going to do to start with is just set up a few basic uh, background details that can allow you, if you've not read the book, to follow uh, the story and the revelations that Arizona is going to unfold for us. As I say, this is not just a City of London financial district. It is the center of a global web. It is the spider in the center of the web, as I expose great detail in The Biggest Secret and a previous book, And the Truth Will Set You Free. And what the basis of that shows is that all these apparently different companies, banks, insurance companies, uh, political parties, actually at the top of their pyramids interlock and are controlled by the same few people. About 13 families run the world and uh, offshoots of these bloodlines under different names. Just give you an example and a little guided tour of where we actually are because that's um, a good example of what I'm talking about. Behind me is the Bank of England. This was uh, uh, created in a charter signed by uh, William of Orange, who became William III, uh, the King of England, in 1688, 1689, and he was one of these bloodlines. And from the moment that uh, he took the uh, throne, then the whole thing started to really epicenter in London. This is when the, the spider at the center of the web really moved in here. So we've got the Bank of England behind me, um, which was created thanks to William uh, of Orange and the people that controlled him, because these guys are just puppets, of course. Over there, we've got the NatWest building. It's one of the big clearing banks um, in England. Um, if you just come around this statue, which I'll come to in a second, behind me there is the Mansion House. That's the centre of government in the city of London, this city within a city. And um, at the top... Uh, you'll see uh, the red uh, cross on the white background, uh, the flag, it's the flag of England, and that uh, symbol goes back right into the ancient world. It was the ancient sun symbol of the Phoenicians uh, back in the uh, ancient uh, Middle and Near East, and uh, the Phoenicians had a number of deities. One of them was called uh, Barati, uh, the female. One was called Barat, the male. Barati and Barat became Britannia and Britain because the British culture was brought here by the Phoenicians about 3000 BC and after. And also they had deities, the Phoenicians, called St. George of Cappadocia who killed the dragon. That became St. George of England um, and that's of course the flag of St. George, the red cross and the white background today. 
Also, the Christian uh, deity called St. Michael was an ancient Phoenician uh, deity long before Christianity. So, the Mansion House, the center of government, um, is a very, very powerful place. We go around here, we've got the uh, Royal and Sun Alliance Insurance Company, the banks and the insurance companies interlock, and as a result of the fantastic amount of wealth that they can move around the financial markets every day, these interlocking organizations control the world financial system. If a stock market goes down and crashes, it's because it's meant to crash. And not everyone loses, you know, when that happens. If you know it's going to crash, you sell your stock, it crashes, you buy it back at a lower price, you then push it back up again and buy other stock at the same time at a few cents on the dollar or whatever. And that means that a financial crash can actually lead, if you know it's coming because you're creating it, to amazing, uh, an amazing expansion of your holdings and your wealth. Over there, we've got the Lloyds Bank building. That's uh, another one of the big clearing banks, which all interlock and are controlled by the same people. And then uh, there we have the uh, Royal uh, Guardian Exchange uh, building, another major insurance company, which, like I say, interlock with all the others. And then we come back uh, to the Bank of England. Now, this financial center uh, along with places like Wall Street, where the bloodline families interlock again, the same people run America as run Britain as run Germany, etc. They have funded many, many times both sides in wars. And ironically and uh, sickeningly, uh, behind me, opposite the Bank of England, in the center of this square, is a memorial to those who died in the two world wars. Let's just go and have a look at that. What uh, happens uh, in terms of creating wars is a technique, a mind manipulation technique that I've called in my books Problem Reaction Solution. Uh, and it works like this. If you want to introduce something, say centralization of power through the United Nations, uh, centralization of power militarily with uh, NATO, the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization, the biggest uh, military organization in the world that's expanding all the time. If you want to centralize power into fewer and fewer hands, if you did that openly and said this is what we want to do, there'd be a reaction against that. People would say, hey, this is a fascist state you, you want to uh, create. We're not having this. But through this technique of problem reaction solution, you can actually manipulate people to demand you do what you want to do anyway. So um, it works like this. First of all, you create the problem, but you get someone else to be blamed for it. You then uh, report that problem uh, through the media in the way you want it reported, because the media is owned by the same people that own the banks, and etc. You get the public to react to your problem by saying, something must be done, this can't go on, what are they going to do about it? And at that point, they, who have covertly created the problem and blame someone else, who glean that reaction of do something, then offer the solution to the problems they have created. So if you take the world wars, um, after the first world war, in which the financial centers of London and Wall Street, etc., funded all sides, power on this planet was in fewer hands than ever before. After the second world war, it was even fewer hands uh, on the wheels of power. And as a result of the Second World War, we had uh, the creation of the United Nations, we had the creation of NATO, and we had this great centralization of global power. Problem, reaction, solution.